All right. Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys doing? Didn't that water look refreshing that they were jumping into? We want to thank our team Oasis uh, from this past summer at our party up in uh, St. Mary's Aquatic Center for providing all the footage for our cannonball bumpers. Maybe you recognize uh, some people jumping in there, but uh, I'm excited to, to kick off this series, and I'm looking forward to see uh, what God will do. And so if you want to ha ha have the notes, you can be in oasisnfl.info or in the Bible app, uh, bible.com, the version app. Uh, the notes are there too, and all the verses will be on the screen. But basically, I'm excited to get kick off this series, and I believe it's time for us to make a big splash. I believe it's time for us to make a big splash. You see, just a few uh, weeks ago, actually a few days ago, Oasis Church, we celebrated our ninth birthday, our ninth birthday as a church, which means we're starting our 10th year of ministry. It's 10th year of ministry is starting even now. And so I believe the time is right for us to recognize that God has brought us here to make a big splash. And what if our lives, what if our lives could have an impact on others and overflow into our community. I mean, what if we could do something now that would impact tomorrow, that would impact the future? And I'm excited because I believe, again, that it's time for us to do just that. It's time for us to go all in and make a big splash. It's time to make a big cannonball. And so I'm excited for this. Now, here's the thing. If you want to make a great big splash, you can't do so by sitting on the edge of the pool. Okay. If you want to make a great big splash, you don't do so by just dipping your toes in the water, like, ooh, chilly, right, which what we would all do if we tried to go to the swimming pool now, uh, because we're Floridians. we got to wait till it's 82 degrees, the water temperature, for us to be able to get in there and enjoy that, almost like bath water, like, yes, now it's right, all right? So we recognize, again, if we're going to make a big splash, we have to go all in. You have to commit, you have to jump all in, and you have to do whatever you can to say, okay, it's not about me, it's about getting those people wet on the sidelines. I'm going to do what I can to make a big splash. And so that's kind of where we're going with this series. I'm looking forward to see what, again what God will do because here's our mission. The mission has been the same as Oasis Church from the very beginning. Nine years celebrating 10th year of ministry we're beginning. Here's our mission as Oasis Church. It's up here on the screen. We exist to lead people to become fully devoted followers of Christ. This is why we're here. We exist to lead people to become fully devoted followers of Christ by encouraging and equipping them. So we're going to encourage these people. We're going to equip people to follow, become fully devoted followers of Christ. And the way we're going to do that, we're going to lead people to become fully devoted followers of Christ by encouraging and equipping them to follow Jesus, love people, and refresh the world. What is Oasis about? This is what we're about. We want to be a people who do whatever we can to make a big splash, to go all in, to help people become fully devoted followers of Christ by encouraging and equipping. They go hand in hand, encourage and equip, and we're going to follow Jesus. We're going to love people. And we're going to refresh the world. This is what we do. And so to kind of talk about this, we want to, I want to just focus, first of all, on the follow Jesus part. Because it's impossible for us to help people become fully devoted if we are not ourselves following Jesus. And so I just want to kind of reiterate and talk about that for a second. What does it mean to be all in, to follow Jesus? What does it mean to, have, to, make a, a, to be a cannonball? Well, the good thing is, is that Jesus himself describes what this looks like. Jesus himself gives us this understanding of what it looks like to be and to go all in. So in Mark chapter 8, starting in verse 34, here's what we read. Then calling the crowd to join his disciples. Okay, so what we see here in that first phrase is that who Jesus is talking to is not just his followers. He's talking with those who are not yet followers. He's talking with those who think maybe Jesus might be a good teacher. He's talking with people who think, okay, maybe Jesus, I've heard that he fed people. Maybe he'll give us a meal. There's people who are just hanging on and maybe just want to see the show or want to get close to somebody who has actually talked to Jesus. So it's not just disciples. It's not just people who have already committed and already all in. This is the crowd and the disciples, okay? So we've got an even mix there that we kind of see here. He said, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross, and follow me. So Jesus says this. This is for everybody who's hearing this, whether you're already a follower or whether you're wondering what it looks like to be a follower. He says, if any one of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way. 
Now that means again that you must give up calling the shot. You must give up going in the direction that you think is right. You must give up this idea where you're going to be kind of make your own decisions. It's a selfish idea. I'm going to decide and control my destiny and my dreams and my purpose. You need to give that up. And then he says, and take up your cross. Now, when he says this again, he's understanding that you've got to be willing even to die, even to go to the very end of your life, recognizing that I'm going to do something. And what are we doing, not only for today, but all the way to the end of our life? Jesus is calling us to follow him. Now, he had not yet taken up his own cross, so he says this before he goes to the cross, but he says this again to a, a culture that knew the cross meant that things were going to be a, a happy ending, okay? So Jesus is saying, listen, just so you understand, be ready to follow me even if the end is unsure, even if it results in death, even if it results in, in your death being 50 years from now and you die uh, peacefully, quote unquote. He says, be willing to follow me all the way to the end. Give up your own way. Take up my cross and follow me. Jesus is saying, you need to be all in. Then he says this, if you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. If you try to call the shots, if you try to be the one that's fully and finally and utterly in control of your life, if you try to live according to what you think is right, if you do this, you end up losing it. But Jesus is talk talking to you. He says, if you give up your life for my sake and for the sake of the good news, you will save it. So Jesus is saying, again, it's kind of a paradox. Most of us go, well, you know what? I'm in control of my destiny. I'm, I'm going to call the shots. So Jesus says, if you try to do that, you will end up losing it in the end. But he says, if you're willing to give up your life for my sake, for the sake of Jesus, Jesus is talking here. He says, for my sake, for what he has done, to, to recognize that he is Lord and Savior, that he is in charge, that he's going to call the shots. And then he says, and for the sake of the good news, to recognize again that when Jesus Christ went to the cross out of God's love for the world, that that was for you, that he paid for your sins, that he went to the cross and laid down his life when I deserve to die, that he was uh, taken off that cross, that he was buried, and that he rose again. And because Jesus is alive, everything changes. If he says, listen, you recognize that not only is Jesus in charge, but that you're playing a part of that good news, that, that you're claiming your part in the good news story, you believe that Jesus Christ died and rose again for you, and that you follow him as your Lord and Savior, he says, you will save it. He's saying, this is what it means to be all in. And then he says in verse 36, and what do you benefit? What do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Jesus says, is anything worth more than your soul? Is anything worth more? Say you get all your dreams in your, in your flesh that you want. You, you achieve everything that you want, and, and you live your life, your life to the fullest that you desire and you think you should have. And Jesus says, what if you gain all that but lose your soul in the end? What if you get everything you, physically that you want, but spiritually you're still dead? And spiritually you've not yet been made alive. Is anything worth more than your soul? So Jesus is saying, this is what it means to be all in. This is what it means to go and to follow me. And then he says this, if anyone is ashamed of me and my message in these adulterous and sinful days, the Son of Man will be ashamed of that person when he returns in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. And so we see the word ashamed and we think maybe that's just embarrassed, okay? But it's not just embarrassed. It's this idea of rejection. So if anyone's ashamed of me, like, are you a follower? No, 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 that's not me. Are, are you going to, no, 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 I'm, oh, man, I cannot never believe a God that would do that. No, I, I reject all of that. If you saying, listen, if this is what our testimony is, we're ashamed of him and reject the message of Jesus in these sinful days, uh, adulterous and sinful days, the Son of Man will likewise not be embarrassed of that person, but reject that person when he returns in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. So Jesus is saying this to disciples and to those who are the crowd on the outside. He's saying, listen, if you want to follow me, here's what it means. You have to give up your own way. Take up your cross and follow me. We live for the sake of Jesus, for the sake of the good news. Because what if we gain the whole world, but we lose our soul? What benefit is that? We recognize again that Christ is coming again. And so Jesus does not lower the bar to following him. He raises it. 
saying this is what it means to be all in. And the reason we're talking about this today, and the reason I want to just kind of bring this up again is I believe, again, that we have people who, who visit Oasis Church, who attend Oasis Church, who may be, uh, again, fully outside. They're part of the crowd. And man, we're so glad you're here. If you're part of the crowd, you're not yet a follower. But we want to point out this is what it means to follow Christ. But we also have people at Oasis Church and, and every church in America who say, wait, I prayed a prayer. 25 years ago. I prayed a prayer 17 years ago. I prayed a prayer three weeks ago, and, and I'm good, right? And Jesus is saying, no, 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 praying a prayer, but nothing changing, that's not salvation. Praying a prayer, but you're still seated on the throne of your life calling the shots, that's not salvation. Jesus says, if you want to follow me, here's what it looks like. You got to be all in. You know, no more say that you're in charge. Take up your cross and follow me. So this is we say about Jesus changes everything, that means he changes everything because he's in control. He's in charge. This is what it means to be all in, to follow Jesus. Jesus told one of his followers in John 14, 6, he said this, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Jesus says, listen, if you want the way, if you want to experience truth in your life, if you want to experience life in your life, life forever and life today in your life, it is only through Jesus. No one can come to the Father except through me. And you could easily go, well, that sounds kind of exclusive. Actually, it's actually very, very inclusive. Everyone's invited to come to Jesus. Everyone's invited to come and have a connection with God through Jesus. Why? Because he is the way. He is the truth, and he is the life. Jesus said, this is what it means to be all in. Are you trusting in another way? Are you trusting in maybe your way and God's way and trying to have a mix there? Are you trusting in your politics or your background or the fact that your mom was a good person? What are you trusting? He said, no, no, the only way to the Father is through Jesus. The only way to have connection with God is through Jesus. This is what it means to be all in. Well, in Romans 6, we see a man who writes these words to the church. And he's, he's a man who used to hate Jesus. He's a man who used to hate the church. He's a man who used to hate the, this idea of the good news, the fact that Jesus Christ died and that he was buried and that he rose again. He hated that because he thought that was anti-God. He hated Jesus until he met Jesus. And everything changed. Everything changed, including his identity, his purpose, his role. In fact, we, we see that his name was Saul, but then he meets Jesus and he becomes Paul. He recognizes, okay, that everything is different now. And so we kind of see a new identity, a new purpose, a new plan. And I don't know what it would be for you, but to recognize, okay, someone used to hate Jesus and now he loves Jesus, something happened to him. He met somebody. And Paul himself writes that he met Jesus. And Jesus changed everything. And so Paul writes, for the wages of sin, what you and I deserve, the paycheck for our sin, is death. And not just a, a physical death, but a spiritual death. A, a life outside of God, a life of, with eternity apart from God. This is what we deserve. We deserve to die. And yet Jesus went to the cross in our place. He says, we've earned this, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. So Paul says, listen, here's what we deserve. We deserve to die. We deserve not having the way. We deserve not knowing the truth. And we deserve not ha having access to life. But God in his goodness offers us and gave us a free gift. Life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. And so we recognize again that this is the way. He is the way to the Father. It's through Jesus. And so some of us go again, hey, I prayed that prayer. I received that gift. Listen, I, I get it. But if nothing changed, if there has been no new identity, Saul could have prayed that prayer and kept on doing his same old thing. He would not have been saved because we recognize that salvation, going all in, changes everything. Jesus is not just your Savior as you pray a prayer. He's your Lord. He guides and directs. He leads. And we follow as followers of him. So we recognize again that the free gift of God is eternal life, but even Paul says, here's what this looks like. And in Galatians 2, verse 20, here's what Paul says this looks like for him. He says, my old self has been crucified. The old way of life, it's dead. Jesus said, if you want to follow me, you got to lay down your old way of life. That is dead. It is gone. 
Paul says, listen, I've received this free gift, and here's what happened. My old self has been crucified with Christ. So we recognize again, when Christ went to the cross, he didn't just go for the world, quote unquote, and kind of nameless and not really understanding, no identity. No, he went for us. He went for the Jeremy before Jesus. Because that Jeremy before Jesus was a sinner and is a sinner and needed to die because that's the wages of sin. That's my life. That's what I deserved. We recognize again that that old way has been nailed to the cross. It is gone. It is dead. And he, Paul even says, it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And so we recognize again, this is what it means to take up your cross, to recognize again that it's not you who live any longer. It's that Christ lives in you, that Christ lives in me. And so when he said earlier, the gift of God is eternal life, that's what he means. Not just life after we die, but every day of our life, that Christ is living in us. That Christ is living in us. That Christ is living in me and in you. And we recognize that that's what it means to be all in as a follower of Jesus. And so I don't want us to start this series about let's make a big splash and miss maybe you're not yet a follower of Christ. I want to invite you to join in with what Christ has done for you. That he's given everything. He laid his life down for you. He has paid for your sin and offers you forgiveness and mercy and life. And not just end of life, but life today. Life today. So I want to challenge you and just implore you and invite you to converse with this. Are you all in? But not what I say you're all in, but does Jesus say, yeah, your old self has been crucified with me. Does Jesus say, yeah, it's no longer you who live, but I live in you every day. And I just want to remind us and, and encourage us, and not scare us, but help us understand, listen, life is short. We prayed for Parkland. And some of us think, well, I got 20 more years and 40 more years, and I'm, I'm really young, guys, 60 more years. Listen, none of us know how much longer we have here on earth. Every day could be the reality. It could be our last. So I want to challenge you, don't put off salvation. Don't put off acknowledging Jesus as your Savior and having him be your Lord, having you be all in and following him. So what does that look like? Well, again, if we're here today and you say, yeah, that is me. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. I think that's probably many of us in this room. And we should be celebrating that. God, God, thank you. My old self has been crucified. And God, every time I want to shrink back and go that old way and go back to those temptations again and give myself back to that old way of life or I'm facing new temptations, God, no, 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 that's been crucified. God, thank you. Thank you that, you, that it's no longer I who live, but Christ, you live in me. And seek again to say, Christ, what else do you need? What else have I picked back up? Where else am I calling the shots that you need to call the shots? press into that. As Josh prayed earlier, we don't want to pull away from the gospel. We want to press into the gospel. We want to lean into the good news that's for you and for me. Maybe you're here today, and again, you kind of stepped in. You've never, you would, there's no argument. You've never given your life to Christ. Then I want to encourage you, and I want to implore you, what benefit would you, if you gained a whole world but missed out on your soul, missed out on life that Christ offers to you? I want to encourage you, come to Jesus today. Receive Jesus today. Live in light of the good news that he offers for you today. Christ died for your sins according to the scriptures. He was buried and he rose again on the third day according to what the Bible says. Listen, this is good news and it's for you. And I would encourage you to say, okay, I used to be this way. I used to not be a follower, but now I'm all in. I'm a follower. This is how that, that looks. I would encourage you, maybe that third row, maybe again, we, we have, again, we're in the Bible Belt, we're in the South, people give me part of a church, hey, I prayed a prayer. Listen, if that's all that you did, you prayed a prayer. But that's not what it means to give your life, to follow Jesus, to have Christ live in you. And I would encourage you, come all the way in. Don't dip your toe in, come all the way in. Come on, cannonball, all in to following Christ. And you can do that today to receive salvation today, to receive Jesus as your Savior and your Lord. He's in charge from this day forward. And usually I pray at the end. We're going to pray right now. We're going to pray right now. Just again, to, for anyone who might need this. This is what you need. This is why Christ brought you here today, to receive him even now. 
So Father God, as we bow our heads before you, God, I pray for those who know you already, who already are followers of you. God, may, this, may they press in and thank you and be praying for those around you who don't know you just yet. God, we thank you again that you're in charge of all things. We thank you again that you are the one who's in, uh, able to re- uh, give us salvation and to follow us and to, uh, to have us follow you, that you laid your life down, that we can give our lives to you and receive new life in you. And so, Father, I pray that anyone in here today that has walked in and they're hearing this, maybe for the first time, or for the first time, it's like their eyes have been opened and they are recognizing that they need you, Jesus, as their Lord and as their Savior. God, I pray that even now in this moment, that you would save them, that you would rescue them, that you would ha- have them recognize that they're able to lay their life down and find in you the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, we recognize, again, that what it takes to be a follower is more than a prayer. It's giving our lives to you, laying them down, being all in. And so, Father, we recognize that it does begin with this acknowledgement that we're going to trust in you, we're going to follow you. And so, God, for anyone here today that is ready to follow you, I pray that they would pray this prayer even now. God, today... We admit, they admit that they are sinners. They admit that they need to be saved. They admit that they, are, that, that they are unable to save themselves, that they need someone outside of them to lay their life down and offer them forgiveness and mercy. So God, I pray for these people even now that they would believe, yes, Jesus, we believe you died for my sins. Yes, Jesus, we believe that you're the way, the truth, and the life. And so, Jesus, I call upon you, and I commit my life to you. I call upon you to be my Savior, and I commit this day forward, I am yours. I am all in. It is no longer I who live, but Jesus, you live in me. And I pray that anyone who needs to pray that would pray that even now, to admit, to believe, to call, and to commit their life, to follow you. This is the good news. You have made a way. It is through you. God, I pray that we would, as a church, as a people, as individuals, follow that, press into that, and be forever changed because you have made the way for salvation and we're able to call you our Lord. Thank you once again for the good news. May we we live it out every day of our lives. May we be all in. Your name we pray, amen, amen. Well, as we kind of shared that prayer and shared the good news, listen, I want to encourage you, if you made that decision today to follow Christ, to commit to say, okay, I am all in. Man, we are so excited for you. This is the good news. We have a couple of things. First of all, we have like a, a box that's just saying, that, hey, listen, there's some resources and some tools to help you as you begin this life of following Christ. It's got a New Testament in there and the, the plan of salvation that you prayed and some other helps. This is available back at our Next, Next Steps resource table. I want to encourage you. Pick that up. It's not a uh, first-time guest gift. This is for those who prayed to receive Christ as Lord and Savior and ready to give their lives to Him. Uh, this is for, for you. So I would encourage you, if that's you, I would encourage you to pick this box up after uh, we're done to help you again follow. Uh, there's a place on your connection card. I would encourage you to check that box off. I committed my life. I prayed to receive Jesus Christ as my Savior. Check off that box. We will pray with you and follow up with you as well. And we're excited again to recognize that we are called to be all in. And I have a little challenge as well for us as a church family, okay? Uh, If you are a father of Christ, if you are all in, I want to challenge you. You have a story that needs to be told. You have a story that needs to be told and shared. And the good news is we live in 2018 where it's easier than ever to record yourself sharing your story for a one to two to three minutes and to post that so people can see it. And so I shot a quick one last night. The audio is not perfect, but that's okay. It's not what it's about. It's just saying, okay, this is something that we can do. So I want to challenge you. You can watch my story. And I want to challenge you to record and share your all-in story on social media this week. So if you would, watch this. Well, howdy, everybody. I'm glad you're watching this. Uh, we are challenging Uh, our church, and I am uh, challenging myself as well to uh, share the story of how uh, we became followers of Jesus. And so this is my Jesus story, how I became a follower of Jesus. And for me, uh, my story begins, I was born into a Christian home, uh, both my mom and my dad. In fact, my dad was uh, principal at the Christian school I was a part of in preschool. Uh, they uh, got me involved not only with the Bible, but with church. And it was there at a church and a Sunday school that 
that I first began to hear again this idea of sin and this idea of punishment, this idea again that because of my sin, that I God, I can't have a connection with God on my own. I need God to do something for me. And so my dad pointed me one evening before uh, going to bed. He opened up a little New Testament uh, there in Xenia, Ohio, and began to point to me the fact that, yes, I was a sinner, but God so loved the world that he gave his very own son, that whoever believes in him would not have to perish, but would have life eternally, eternal life found in the person of Jesus Christ. And so as a four-year-old, I knew that I wasn't perfect. I knew that I had sinned and I knew that I needed to be saved. And so I made that decision as a four-year-old to receive the love that Jesus Christ offered to me, to believe that he died on the cross for my sin and that he rose again and that he is and became my savior at that night. And over the last several decades, I've realized again that that was way more than just a prayer that someone prayed, that I prayed that night. Uh, it was actually a giving my life to Christ. And so over the last several decades, again, have been uh, being someone who's grown as a human uh, to realize that I've still sinned and to realize and believe that Jesus Christ still forgives me. But not only that, but to be able to trust Jesus as my Lord, to, to believe that when he says certain things, I need to do them, that where he leads me, I'm able to follow. And as he guides, I'm able to trust in his hand. And so uh, I, I attest and I uh, affirm that I am a follower of Jesus, that he has given me a joy, a peace. He's given me the ability to love others. He's given me the ability to be set free uh, from sin as I've grown and, and temptation. And as I encounter new temptations, he is the one who's going to be able to set me free from those as well. He is the one that is my hope. I'm hoping in him not only for eternal life, but I'm hoping in him for life today. He is my Lord. He is my Savior. And so that is my Jesus story. And so I want to challenge you, first of all, if you you don't have a Jesus story, you've not yet become a father of Jesus, but you want to talk further, and then please message me. I'd love to talk with you about my story and what I believe Christ can do for you as well. And then if you call yourself a follower of Jesus at Oasis Church, I encourage you to share your Jesus story so you can be an encouragement uh, and challenge and share your testimony, your story, what Christ has done for you on your social media as well. Thank you for watching this. I hope you have a great day, and I look forward to talking to you soon. All right, well, so I want to challenge you again this week. If you're a follower of Christ, and take your phone out, turn it so it's facing you, all right, that little switcheroo thing, all right, uh, do that, and then record your video. It might be a minute, it might be 47 seconds, it might be 10 minutes, I don't know how long it is, but record, again, this is your Jesus story. What has Jesus done for you? Are you all in? What does it look like? How did you receive Christ? And what does that mean for your life today? And be willing to share that. I want to encourage you to use the hashtag FollowJesusOC. FollowJesusOC. And we'll be able to kind of track those and do that. So, and again, I don't know if one person will take the challenge or 20 people, but I encourage you, be willing to share your story because it needs to be shared. The fact, again, that Jesus has changed everything and he's changed your life. And so for, as we kind of just talk about that, this is, again, is where we're going. Salvation has got to come first. It's the foundation of our life. But then again, we recognize that God has called us as a church to gather together. So we together are beginning our 10th year of ministry. And simply this, I want to remind you of this truth. Our church, our church can never do all that we're called to do without you. We need you. We need you again to recognize that God has not brought you to Oasis by accident, that God has brought you here for a reason. And we need you to jump in with us because together we want to make a big splash. Together we want to uh, be and have a cannonball effect in our community and in North Florida. So in Acts 2.42, we see uh, kind of, again, what happened, what God was doing in the very, very, very early days of the church. The Holy Spirit was moving in a mighty way. And the great news is the Holy Spirit, as he moved, then still moves in a mighty way. He still changes people's hearts. The way that Christ grew the church in Acts, he still grows the church in 2018. We are recognized the same power is available to us. We want to see, okay, what did it look like for them? How did it look like for these early believers to go all in? Well, we see that all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. So they devoted themselves. They weren't kind of like, well, maybe sort of. They were all all in to the teaching, to the fellowship, to gathering and sharing in meals, including communion, what we call the Lord's Supper, and recognizing that we were all in with prayer. And here's what happened. A deep sense of awe 
came over them all. And the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together with, uh, at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day, the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. So what we see in these verses, especially at verses 44 to 47, we see a people that were all in. They were all in. They were completely devoted to the gathering, completely devoted to what God was doing, completely all in, to the point of they were sharing their possessions and, and making sure that no one had a need in their life, to, to recognize that they were willing to worship together at the temple, to recognize that they were going to give their lives to meet in people's homes. They were all in. And what do we see over and over again? That they're praising God. They're recognizing again what God is doing. The people are like, what is going on there? You people are crazy. There is something different about you. And each day, each day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. So we see again that the call to church and the call to ministry is way beyond just attending. We need you to be all in together as Oasis Church. And the great news is there's a place for you. The great news is, is we need you. The great news is, yes, you're able to use your gifts. You're able to use, again, your experiences. You're able to use what God is doing and has done. We're able to recognize that God is at work in our lives. And so Oasis is not just the church I attend. I'll fix that for next service, all right? Not the church I attend, all right? Oasis is my church. I'm all in. We want to recognize, okay, this is what God has called us to be. Not just, again, if you're looking for a church your first time, I know this is weird. Hey, welcome to Oasis. We're glad you're here, all right? But if you've been here for more than a week, listen, don't just have Oasis be the church, that's the church that you attend. We want to encourage you. This is your church. We want to encourage you to be all in. We believe, again, that we can't do all that God wants us to do without you. We want you to be all in. And so uh, someone who says, this is my church, I'm all in. Here's what it, it means. It, it means I serve at my church. I, I serve somewhere at my church. That's my church. And they need me, and I get to use my gifts, so I serve at my church. And we, we recognize, again, that we, there are many of us who are part of Team Oasis, many of us who serve each and every week, and we cannot do all that God has in mind for our kids, for our teens, for our adults without you. Thank you for serving. Thank you for serving. But I want to challenge you and encourage you, listen, if you're not yet on the team, jump on the team. We need you to be engaged. We need you to connect with us. We need you to go all in. In fact, right now, at this very moment, we need 10 elementary workers. We need 10 adults to say, listen, we're going to jump in to our elementary age group. Because listen, here's the deal. God's growing our, eight, our elementary. But right now, we have one class for first graders to fifth graders. Okay, that is a lot of years to cover in a few minutes to engage a six-year-old and to engage an 11-year-old, okay? Completely different worlds. So our goal is to say, listen, let's divide that class up. We'll have first to third and then fourth and fifth, those who are older elementary. But we can't do that without workers. And so we want to encourage you. We need 10 elementary workers right now to jump in and be a part of that. You might say, okay, I'm in. What do I do? You need to find Joe. I'll have Joe be out here. We're going to use that connection card. I'm all in, Oasis Kids. Write that on there. We'll get you plugged in. And we believe, again, that God has that right now. I, I've been at some churches where we're going to say, okay, we're not going to go further until everyone raises their hand, until we get 10 hands raised up. We're not doing that. All right? You're welcome. Okay? But don't push me, just so you know. Don't push me. We might do that once in here, just so you know, all right? So we need 10 in elementary, okay? Uh, we need uh, 10 for guest services. We, we need, what does that mean? That means that you're going to come 10 minutes early to church and be ready to hold a door open, give someone a, a, a connection card, uh, ha, make sure you smile. I've seen all of your smiles. You are really good at smiling, okay? Smile and just welcome somebody. Welcome to Oasis Church. Why is that important? Every Sunday, it's someone's first Sunday. Every Sunday, it's somebody's first Sunday. And who knows, they might be giving God one last chance. And you might be the one that says, listen, we're so glad you're here. And welcome. Come on in. 
have some coffee. And find a, we'll find, help you find a seat. We want you to do whatever we can to eliminate distractions so that you can hear what Christ is saying to you out of his word. The music that, speak, that God is able to use to speak to your heart situation. Listen, we're so glad you're here. And so we need 10 guest, guest services. You come a few minutes early, and you're still part of the same service. You come and be a part of that, pass out brochures, our pass out connection cards at the end. You help receive the offering. And in the middle, middle, you're ready to serve, whatever that might look like. So we would encourage you. We need you to be a part of that. You can write guest services on your card. We need four people in the booth, and we need four people to work with teens, okay, middle schoolers and high schoolers. We need four adults to join our team. Because this, we're, our teen ministry is growing. And we recognize, again, that it's not important enough just to come and have, this past week we had hot wings and buffalo wild wings. We had 250 uh, buffalo wild wings and Cokes and Valentine's cookies. And the event was called Heartburn, okay? It, it worked, all right? Thursday had heartburn, all right? Just so you know, all right? So it's not just to have an event. We want every teenager to have, be able to, to know an adult, an adult who loves Jesus and is willing to help them in those crucial teenage years to love Jesus and follow Jesus as well. That's the important thing. So we need four people. Listen, here's what we need. If you are saying, I don't have a place to serve because you didn't mention what I want, I'm just telling you what our needs are. We will find a place for you. We will find a place for you. So listen, if you're good at graphic design, you want to use that for the kingdom, and let us know. If you're able to fly an airplane and pull a banner behind it talking about Jesus, we'll, we'll use it, right? Let us know, all right? Whatever it is, whatever it is, there's a place for you. I would encourage you, use your gifts. Get plugged into Team Oasis. Serve somewhere. Why? Because this is your church. It's not just the church I attend. This is my church, and I serve at my church, all right? Secondly is this. I financially give to the work of Jesus at my church. Again, so many of us give, and you're so generous, but there's still people who say, listen, I go to that church, but I don't give there. Listen, if this is your church, this is your place, we need you to be all in. We read uh, that, that earlier when there was a need, people were willing to sell possessions. People were willing to sell their own stuff to help provide needs for somebody else. So what we're doing is we're giving what God has given to us to, to pull together to see Jesus. We want to financially give to the work of Jesus in our community. Does God need our money? He doesn't. But we get to join God in his work. And that's one of the ways we do that. And again, that is a faith aspect that we saw uh, in our previous surveys. That is a, a discipline we want to grow in. Uh, second, our, what we do, okay, Oasis is not just a church I attend. It's my church I'm all in. I, I build relationships. I, I care for the people at my church. That we don't want to be the last one here and the first one to leave. Okay, stick around. Get connected. They talked about in Acts 2 where they shared a meal together. That's why OC midweek is so important. All it does is give us an environment where we can circle up and get to know each other. I would encourage you, if this is your church, get to know some people. Show that you care for people. Pray for each other. Be plugged in. The easiest, best way to do that is OC midweek. It's this Wednesday. It's every Wednesday at 645. Love to have you jump in. We have something for all ages. Why is this important? Again, it's not just the church you attend. This is my church. And I care for the people at my church. Just like I want to be cared for, I'm going to care for others as well. I'm going to be part of that. I'm going to build a community at my church. Uh, Oasis Church is not just a church I attend. It's my church. I'm all in. And so what do you want to encourage you? We want to encourage you to invite people to your church, okay? We want to encourage you to, to spread the word, okay? Because in our early days, we kind of gave a challenge. Listen, we believe in church growth. We want our church to grow. So the early days challenge we gave was that everyone, everyone needed to have as many babies, adopt as many babies as possible. Everyone needs to grow the church. We're going to do it organically, okay? That was going to take a long time, just so you know, okay? And many of you have been faithful to that. So thank you for adopting and for raising up kids. But we want to say again, okay, the best way to do that is the invite. Again, stats, 70s. Uh, 80% of Jacksonville do not have a church, a church home that they regularly go to. They might have one they attend on certain days, but not engaged in. So we want to encourage you, take cards. We have cards at every main entrance of, of, of the buildings that we have, if there are three buildings, for you to take with you and invite them. These invite cards don't do any good here, right? They're supposed to be taken out. So uh, we have some that say no perfect people allowed. If you're not a perfect person, you can relate to that. You take some of those cards. If you are really, really awkward and don't like talking, okay, you just take this card because it says it all, all, right? You don't have to say anything. This is your invitation, all right? Just here, here, all right? Whatever it is, all right? Just, it says it all right there. We want to encourage you, be willing to invite, be willing to invite. And then secondly, we understand, okay, maybe there's a reason 
other than being shy, other than maybe uh, uh, lacking maybe boldness sometimes, and I, I've been there, I've been there, I know what that's like, all right? Maybe there's another reason why we're not invited. Maybe there's something that we're not seeing. So we have an index card here on your, on your chair, okay? You can be anonymous with this, okay? The reason I don't invite people to Oasis Church is... The pastor's weird, okay? That's cool, all right? Let me know that. I want to do that, all right? The reason I don't invite, baby, if there's a reason why you don't that we can fix, I want to encourage you. You can use an anonymous way because we want to know that. Sometimes, again, we all have blind spots. Believe me, I know. I don't see everything there. It might need to be seen here. So I want to fix that. So I want to encourage you, okay? The reason I don't invite people is this. I mean, let us know. Be willing to, to let us know that. You can do it anonymously, and you just fold it up, put it in the offer plate, and no one will even know. We'll check the footage later on, but no one will even know, just so you know. I'm just joking. We want to do that, all right? Just so you know, all right? But listen, uh, I say that, and I'm willing to put myself out there in our church out there, our leadership, because listen, it's important. We, go, we want to go all in. We want to go all in. We want to make a big splash. We want to see God do a mighty work. And so as we invite, as we serve, as we financially give, as we care for those around us, the last thing we want to do for my church, we want to pray for our church. I pray for people to hear the good news and to be saved at Oasis Church. That's my church. I pray that God would use my church to further his kingdom. I pray that God would bring people, a random invitation might lead to a change of eternity. God, I pray that you would use our church, Oasis Church, to have people hear the good news, to give their life to Christ, to be made new. That's not just the church I attend. That's my church. I'm all in. So I want to encourage you as we start off this, I believe, again, as we start our 10th year of ministry, we're ready to make a big splash. We are, the potential has never been greater. And I love, again, there's so many churches around in our area that weren't here 10 years ago. Man, that is a good thing. Why? Because there's thousands of people that were not here 10 years ago. And they're moving in every single day. We need all of us to be all in, to point people to Jesus, because Jesus changes everything. The gospel is true. It's good news. And we can trust and follow him. And we recognize, again, as we follow Christ, as we love people, as we refresh the world, we want to see other people follow Jesus, love people, refresh the world, have it keep going, not only for our kids and next generations, but for fellow adults, fellow teenagers here in our community. I'm all in. I want to encourage you. Are you all in? Let's do this together. Let's do this together. Let's just go ahead and close in a word of prayer. I know we covered a lot. I know I'm amped up on caffeine and talking fast. But man, this is it. This is where we're at. So Father God, as we close this time in a word of prayer, we ask again, God, that you would just move in a mighty way. God, we don't live in 1818. We don't live in 1618. We live in 2018. And it's never been easier to point people to you. God, there's so many resources that we could leverage there's so many avenues that we can do to be part of saying, hey, we are all in. And so God, I pray that you would use our efforts, that you would use our abilities. God, so I pray for those who are followers of Christ now that you're prodding them right now. You need to share your story on social media. God, I pray that they would press into that, that they would carve out a few minutes to use their cell phone, to use their Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat and use that as a way to tell people what you've done in their lives. God, it's easier than ever. God, help us to, to show that we're all in and to be willing to share our story, to not be ashamed of you, to share what you have done for us and what you're still doing in our lives. God, I pray for our elementary. God, thank you for growing it. God, I pray for adults who will come alongside and be willing to, to serve kids in your name. God, I pray that you would do a work in their lives. We pray for 10 elementary workers. God, we pray for 10 people who are willing to say, yes, I'll come to church a little bit early to greet someone in your name, to welcome somebody, to make someone feel at ease, to help, th help them find where their kids go, to help them eliminate as many distractions as possible so that they can hear from you. Yes, God, I'm in. For those who are ready to work with teenagers, yes, God. Have them be ready. Have them say yes. This is my church. 